So another scenario that we saw back at the beginning uh, in the introduction to limits where limits fail to exist is, is something like this that's illustrated graphically here where the function grows without bound. Right? So we have essentially, if you like, we have a vertical asymptote. Okay. Um, so you're probably familiar with vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes from basic um, graphing that you might have learned in, in high school or in a pre-calculus course, right? Um, and, and so a vertical asymptote is, is a place where the function, <clears throat> as we move towards that vertical asymptote, as our x values get close to that vertical asymptote, our y values increase without limit, right? They go on forever. Um, we talk about this going off to infinity, right? Um, so although we can certainly say that the limit doesn't exist in this situation, um, saying that a limit doesn't exist isn't particular dis particularly descriptive because there are lots of ways in which a limit could fail to exist. Um, so in a scenario like this, we might want to say a little bit more. We might want to say the limit doesn't exist because the function grows without bound, because in some sense, um, the limit is infinite. So what we do is we basically, you know, we take this original, you know, expression for the limits, right? So we have limit x approaching c of f of x equals l. What we're going to do is we're going to allow for the possibility that, well, l might be plus or minus infinity, right? So our function could be getting very large and positive, but also very large and negative, right? Which would be the minus infinity result. Um, so we can talk about a limit being infinite, right? And that's more informative than simply saying the limit doesn't exist. So in this scenario here, I can say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is, is infinity. And, and now I'm telling you a lot more than before, now I'm telling you that, hey, the limit is infinity. So I know there's this vertical asymptote there. I know that the val y values of my function are growing without bound, right? I'm giving you this extra information. Um, we're also, um, fairly soon, we're going to allow the value of c to be plus or minus infinity, right? Um, because we can talk about not only vertical asymptotes, we can also talk about horizontal asymptotes. We can talk about what happens eventually to a function as x gets very big and positive, or as x gets very big and negative, right? Um, so when we're dealing with these limits involving infinity, we're talking about this asymptotic behavior. What happens eventually to the function, right, um, as x goes off, or as we get close to this vertical asymptote? What's happening to the function, okay? So, for, for infinite limits, uh, we can start with a quick definition here. Um, so when we say that the, the limit as x approaches c of f of x, if we say that's infinity, what this means, so now we, we have to think about, you know, how do we make this precise? What we want to say is that we can make the value of the function arbitrarily big by choosing an x value that's close enough to c. So how do we quantify arbitrarily big? Well, you know, when we thought about the regular limit and this limit, we wanted to make the difference between f of x and l arbitrarily small, right? We wanted them to be close. And the way we did that is, is we said, well, give me this epsilon, right? Give me this number, make it as small as you want. I'm going to make this difference smaller, right? So here, we want to say that f of x is getting big. So we say, give me some number, make it as big as you want, right? So given any positive real number, so let's say n, there is a delta such that um, if 0, so if the absolute value of x minus c is between 0 and delta, that's going to imply that f of x is bigger than this really big number n, okay? So, so that's how we define a limit um, being infinite, okay? 
we'll, we'll get to the limits where x goes to infinity. We'll get to that later on. Um, and and now there's a number of variations we could make on this, right? I'm not going to write them all down because I think it's time consuming and plus they're in the book. Uh, if, we, if we wanted to talk about the limit being minus infinity, well, then we, we choose n to be some big negative number and we try to make f of x smaller than it, right? So n would be less than z. We just reverse those two inequalities. Same story. Um, the other variations we could make is we might want to consider one-sided limits that are infinite. And again, we just make the same modification that we did when we talked about one-sided limits that had a finite value. Uh, instead of saying that the absolute value is between 0 and delta, we would just say that x, you know, for left-handed limit, we say x is between c minus delta and c, or for right-handed limit, between c and c plus delta. So we make that same modification that we made before, right? And so there, there are several different, you know, variations here, right? Plus infinity, minus infinity, left hand at plus infinity, left hand at minus infinity, right? Uh, right hand at plus infinity, right hand at minus infinity, but they're, they're all saying basically the same thing, okay? Um, so this is what it means to have an infinite limit, right? Really all it's telling us is that there is some place where the function is getting really, really big. And typically this is happening because you've got some sort of division by zero going on in the expression that defines your function. Uh, we'll look at a few examples, and then we'll move on to talking about what happens when x goes to infinity.